This week on Business Spotlight, we look at a group of engineering professionals who brought a controlling margin of the South African arm of Netherlands-based engineering consultancy Royal Haskoning DHV, and have rebranded it as Atana. Joining me in the studio to give insights into this new venture is the Executive Director, Mongani Tombeni and Kevin Subramani, the Director for Aviation Industry Mission Critical Facilities at Atana. Lady and Jen, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having us, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Uh, Bongani, if I could start with you. So the rebranding uh, to Atana is a, is a significant move, um, you know, especially highlighting the majority African ownership, 74% yes. by management and uh, employees. Can you perhaps elaborate on the core strategies uh, behind this transaction and transition and what was uh, the, the journey or the motivation for it? Yeah, firstly, let me tell you what Atana is. And um, so for us, effective 1st of July 2025, um, so we've rebranded to Atana, and it's not just a name change for us, it's really just a strategic focus of being an African, majority African-owned business that addresses the needs of an African market and is able to bring global expertise to an African market. So the name Atana is inspired by the Shona word Jakabatana, which basically means closely connected. Um, and it really just emphasizes the legacy that we have in the African market. So our entity was actually founded 103 years ago. Um, those that have been in the industry will know that it used to be Stuart Scott International that was founded in 1922. So we've been in existence for over 103 years. And so we've really established a good sound legacy in the market and we want to continue that legacy by being a predominantly African owned business that is able to cater to the African market and also just bring state of the art engineering solutions and infrastructure solutions to the market. Well, it sounds yeah. exciting. Yeah, so it's very exciting. So, so, so Kevin, from uh, the perspectives of aviation industry and, uh, as you were saying, mission critical facilities, uh, how does the Atana rebrand uh, you know, does, does it change or impact the operations, client relationships, for instance, and, uh, and perhaps the project pipeline? Absolutely, it doesn't, right, uh, in that perspective. So one of the key reasons behind Huskening, uh, maintaining a 26% shareholding behind, uh, behind Atana as a company, is that um, commitment to continue to collaborate and work together. Over the years, we've developed a, a strong working relationship with the uh, with Haskinen Group, and this comes from the time when we were Royal Haskinen DHV South Africa, and specifically in these target markets, in these niche markets of data center development, aviation um, development, and industrialization as well. And this working arrangement and this team and the, the way we service our clients in these markets will continue to go into the future in that regard. So, so that doesn't change or is not disruptive too much. So we can maintain that level of standard that main, and maintain that level of quality and delivery to these clients in these markets. Yeah. Well, perhaps again, so um, not, not it's a rebrand, but also a new identity. So with a new identity and into the market comes things like vision, uh, and mission and values. Yeah. Uh, how do these perhaps impact, or um, how, how, how do you look at this as a you know as, as something that you need to deliver in the market? Yeah, well, of course, it's a it's a rebrand. It gives us a, a nice fresh start. Um, so um, our strength is that we're able to bring really great digital solutions to the infrastructure market. Um, so over the time, in certain areas, the market has become quite saturated. So we have to continuously differentiate ourselves. Um, and so we are a proudly African business that really just wants to deliver solutions where we, we can make the, the world a better place. I, and, and that not being something that is just cliched, but something that is tangible. So for example, if we look at road networks and we look at public sector and we look at mission critical facilities, um, our entire value proposition across all the sectors in which we operate is really just geared at making the world a better place. You want to be able to allow um, the mama that sells acha in the township to be able to safely get onto a public transport network that will enable her to go into the city, for example. So we really apply our minds in offering solutions that are going to advance business, um, uh, advance the economy, and really just make a sustainable impact for all. 
in terms of uh, v values and, and uh, mission and vision internally as well, mm -hmm. uh, how are you going about um, addressing that from within the organization? Yeah, so from within the organization, as you know, our inspiration is to be closely connected. So we're looking at um, being more than a partner to, to um, our, all our stakeholders. Um, so uh, really our purpose and our vision is to really just to, to have a greener, fairer world and to make sure that our, the solutions that we deliver enable that and drive that forward. So that is not just an external focus, but an internal focus as well with our culture, with our people, from HR to support services, and of course, delivering state-of-the-art engineering solutions. On that point, uh, so Kevin, in terms of uh, delivering state-of-the-art uh, technologies, et cetera, across uh, the Africa continent, um, how, what, what does the African industry need from that perspective mm -hmm. uh, in order to, uh, to boost economies, uh, particularly from the services that uh, an organization like Atana brings to the party? Yeah, I think, um if I had to emphasize on one word, I'd say enablement. Mm -hmm. Enablement is, is very important. Africa has huge potential for growth, huge potential for industrialization, but we, we haven't quite realized that at the rate that we, we should be doing. Let's, let's face it, right? I think one of the biggest gaps is, is energy. Energy deficit is, is not a secret in Africa, and we know, all know energy drives economies, right? And drives economic growth. Mm. So a lot of the time we say it's, it's government and, and systemic issues. And yes, government does play a key role in term, and legislation does play a key role in terms of enablement and growth. But also it takes, I think, visionary leaders as well uh, in the private sector that can rise up right, yeah. and, and come together from various sectors to actually make this happen. We can, we can drive infrastructure development. We can drive um, awareness around digitization and tools and techniques. We can yep. drive industrialization. Right, just by coming together, right? I think at at Atana, we, we we also do our bit, right? We do our bit by the way we set up our projects. We have a very future-focused mindset, and the tools and techniques and the data-driven approach we take to our project development actually sets us up um, for digital growth into the future. And enablement is we do that together with our clients as well in terms of every single project that we look at and how we set things up and how we deliver the product to the client. It also focuses around an, uh, around an enablement journey for digitization and growth into the future. Mm -hmm. Well, only then perhaps, uh, you know, finally, the uh, integrated planning you mentioned earlier in our discussion is important to solving modern challenges. Can you perhaps explain why and what is it about integrated planning that helps you to serve customers and, and provide services across the continent? Yeah, so one of the, the biggest issues that we have in South Africa and in the continent is the lack of an integrated master plan when one considers infrastructure development. Um, so there have been countries that have done it very successfully, such as Singapore, where they, they have a national master plan that considers, for example, your road networks, your health care, your water. So when you have situations where provincial governments each develop their own plans and the plans don't talk to one another, then there's a bit of disjoint. So I spend quite a lot of time talking about the importance of developing an integrated master plan in infrastructure um, so that all these plans can come to, together. So where you have a road, it needs to lead into a community where you've got health care, where you've got water, where you've got cities, you've got enablement. And we still have a bit of a disjoint um, in South Africa because also with political influence, everyone wants to run their own agenda. So integration is very, very important. Um, and us at Atana believe in integrated solutions. So really just future thinking. So if you're going to be developing something, how is it going to impact and enable other industries to thrive and flourish 10, 20, 40 years from now? So we're extremely legacy focused. Um, we've been around for 103 years. And of course, we have every single ambition to be around for generations to come. And we want to develop projects and solutions that are beyond our own lifetimes. Um, and so integration is very important. Master planning is very important. And we are hell-bent on delivering sustainable infrastructure solutions for legacies to come. Oh, we're going to have to leave it there. But uh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Sounds thank like you. a good story to tell. And we look forward to the next chapter. Super. Thank you so much, thank you, Gary. Gary. Thank you for having us. That was uh, Bongani Mtombeni and Kevin Subramani from Atana sharing the strategic, operational and cultural aspects of Atana's rebrand and growth.